Total laryngectomy is not at all a difficult topic to understand. But nowadays, as the surgery is done in uh, specialized centers, the residents are not getting chance to see or assess this as a routine procedure. So anyway, today we will uh, discuss on total laryngectomy and uh, indications, contraindication, procedure and complications. So you know that uh, before going to total laryngectomy, you should know the anatomy of larynx in detail. That is already discussed. And this larynx extends from uh, hyoid bone up to uh, cricoid cartilage. So this is anterior view. This is uh, a sagittal and coronal. Okay. So uh, yeah, epiglottis. Here epiglottis, epiglottis, hyoid bone, hyoid bone and hyoid bone. Then uh, thyroid cartilage, thyroid cartilage and thyroid cartilage. This is cross section, sagittal. So this membrane is thyrohyoid membrane and green is cricoid, 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 okay and cricothyroid membrane. And this is trachea, tracheal rings, trachea and trachea, okay. And um, true vocal cord and false cord. True vocal cord at the uh, border of cornus elasticus and the false uh, vocal cord at the quadrilateral membrane. Uh, in total laryngectomy, we remove the uh, larynx from hyoid up to the cricoid cartilage with the lesion in total along with the 1 cm margins of normal mucosa. Okay. So, uh, what are the indications, contraindication, how we do that and complication. First, uh, we can start with the indications. The first one is uh, advanced laryngeal or hypopharyngeal malignancy. Advanced in the sense with the extension into uh, thyroid or cricoid cartilage or extra laryngeal soft tissue involvement. Okay, so that is one indication. Then failed response to primary radiotherapy or chemo radiotherapy. So we do surgery as salvage surgery. Okay, then extensive tumors of histological entity not suitable for organ preservation. That is uh, tumors like chondrosarcomas, soft tissue sarcomas, or uh, large cell neuroendocrine tumors, etc. So, in that cases, it is better to go for a total laryngectomy. Then, laryngeal trauma, severe laryngeal trauma uh, in which in, uh, reconstruction is not possible. Then, patients having no voice and chronic aspiration due to cranial nerve palsy of uh, 9, 10, and 11 cranial nerve palsies or recurrent laryngeal papillomatosis with an increased risk of tracheal invasion. In, these are all the Indications of total laryngectomy. All these are the indications of laryngectomy. But you know, what was the indication for first reported laryngectomy? It was syphilitic larynx. Okay, syphilis, syphilitic larynx. And the Wilroth in 1873 did the first total laryngectomy for malignancy larynx. Okay. The contraindications for which surgery cannot be done. They are contraindications. One is surgically unresectable tumor. The tumor cannot be resected. Okay, no other way. Then distal metastasis. Already there is distal metastasis, so the, the so um, removal of the primary will not be any uh, beneficial. Then high anesthesia risk. Anesthetis is not uh, giving, uh, ready to give anesthesia. Then again, no way for surgery. Or a tumor encasing common carotid artery or internal carotid artery. So these four are the contraindication. In tumor invading profound parts of tongue, because of the so many newer modalities, surgery can be done in extreme circumstances, but associated Surgery related morbidity is very high. So this is a relative contraindication for total laryngectomy. Okay, so uh, surgically unresectable tumors, distal metastasis, high anesthesia risk and tumor encasing, common carotid artery, 
or internal carotid artery are the contraindication. The equipments needed are a standard head and neck soft tissue set. Then we need a laryngoscopy set because before starting the surgery, a laryngoscopy has to be done. So we need a laryngoscopy set. Then cautery, both monopolar and bipolar and also harmonic scalpel. And if concurrent gastrostomy is not planned, we need a nasogastric tube. And also if planning a primary TEP, we need a tracheoesophageal puncture processes and also puncture kit. Okay, then how will you proceed or what are the steps of surgery? In total laryngectomy, as I already told, the entire larynx, including the prelaryngeal uh, muscles and also the ipsilateral lobe of thyroid, along with the level 6 lymph node, that is a prelaryngeal lymph nodes from hyoid bone and larynx from hyoid bone up to the cricoid cartilage is removed. So the first step is general anesthesia and uh, endotracheal intubation is done and if they have already done a tracheostomy, the cuffed tube can be introduced through the stoma. So GA with the endotracheal intubation that is the first step then second do a direct laryngoscopy this is uh, to know the exact location and extent of the tumor third we have to approach it so skin incision And the type of skin incision depending upon the preference of surgeon and whether you are doing in uh, along with this whether you are doing a neck dissection or not. So a detailed class on neck dissection and also incisions for neck dissection was already taken. Please go and uh, study that. So commonly we prefer a Glex Sorensen U-shaped incision otherwise called an apron incision or an utility incision for total laryngectomy and then elevation of the uh, skin flap that is uh, subplatysmal skin flap is elevated from uh, superiorly the limit is hyoid bone inferiorly the limit is uh, suprasternal notch that is the sternum along with the clavicular head inferiorly and that is in the subplatysmal plane. And if you are doing a neck dissection, it has to be done at this point. Then go for a neck dissection. And after that, we have to isolate and mobilize the larynx. So, mobilization of the larynx. Mobilization of larynx. We want to remove the diseased part from extending from hyoid bone up to the cricoid cartilage. So that has to be isolated or it has to be detached from all attachments uh, either from superior to uh, or above downwards or from below upwards. Okay. And once this all this is removed, the, the one remaining is the trachea. So that has to be Fasten to the skin as a permanent tracheostoma. Okay, so this is and after that there is closure of the wound. This is in short of uh, total laryngectomy in short. So for that we have to remove the uh, strap muscles and also the muscular attachment from the upper surface of the hyoid bone. And then this uh, uh, superior vascular pedicle is ligated from both sides. That is the superior thyroid artery and also the superior laryngeal branches are ligated on both sides. So that during further uh, dissection, the bleeding will be very much limited. And by convention, we remove the thyroid lobe of thyroid on the uh, ipsilateral side, that is on the side of disease and it is preserved on the opposite side. So the inferior vascular pedicle on the contralateral side of, uh, of uh, thyroid lobe is preserved. But if the tumor is very bulky and penetrating into the thyroid, 
that has to be removed in toto so uh, so that we have to do a total thyroidectomy also okay so uh, superior attachment removed superior vascular pedicle is ligated after that the stylohyoid uh, attachment is also um, removed below the attachment is mainly sternohyoid and sternothyroid and inferior constrictor so sternohyoid and sternothyroid is cut as low as possible in the neck and also inferior constrictor is removed from the thyroid cartilage by using cautery and after that uh, we have to reach into the pharyngeal mucosa and one thing more um, after this if we have, we have not done a um, primary uh, tracheostomy that uh, tracheostomy has to be done after removing the all the attachments and before reaching into the mucosa so for that the anterior wall of the trachea is cut and usually an oblique cut is given so that the posterior wall is longer than the anterior wall so that it will be easier to do a uh, tracheostomy fastening okay the fastening of tracheostoma will be easy then uh, we catch hold of this epiglottis that is here so the muscular attachment to the superior surface of hyoid bone is removed that is the tongue muscles are uh, removed and then we can go inside either through this vellicula or through the uh, pyriform fossa but uh, easy to uh, uh, for approach is through vellicula so through vellicula the mucosa is cut through vellicula and then epiglottis uh, catch hold of the epiglottis after that the mucosal cuts are made so that the whole of the uh, disease is removed and also by keeping a margin of minimum 1 cm as per standards ok so mucosal cut all around the disease with a 1 cm margin and the uh, dissection is completed or the larynx is removed by going through dissecting through a plane between trachea and esophagus and reaching up to the stoma and the whole uh, specimen is sent for histopathology and if you have any doubt regarding the margin positivity it has to be sent for frozen section and decision has to be taken after getting frozen section report ok so that is mobilization and removal of the larynx then comes the uh, and also one thing um, after removal the and fasten, uh, after fastening the tracheostoma uh, after fastening the stoma if you are planning for a primary tracheoesophageal puncture it has to be done if not proceed with the cricopharyngeal myoma ok so uh, removing the upper attachments including the strap muscles and the muscular attachment then the stylohyoid attachments are removed then the superior vascular pedicle bilaterally ligated and if preserving the uh, opposite thyroid lobe the inferior vascular pedicle is preserved ok then the sternohyoid and sternothyroid muscles are uh, removed and also inferior constrictor then uh, fastening of tracheostoma after that uh, uh, entry into the uh, epiglottis through vellicula then the mucosal cuts are made after that removing the um, uh, diseased laryngeal uh, uh, specimen and uh, primary uh, TEP if not go for a cryopharyngeal then next is closure closure should be done without tension and this is ideally a three layer closure is done the first one is the pharyngeal closure it can be either a horizontal or it can be a vertical or it can be a t-shaped ok and that is the, uh, the surgeon's preference but it should be without tension and the uh, pharyngeal closure is usually a continuous coronal uh, sutures inverting coronal sutures continuous coronal inverting sutures using 3-0 vitally and before closure if there is no gastrostomy tube 
the nasal gastric tube should be inserted before closing the pharynx. Okay, so pharyngeal closure, the first layer uh, using continuous corner inverting sutures with 30 vitreal. After that, the uh, platysma uh, uh, flaps can be approximated with an interrupted sutures and also skin suturing with interrupted sutures. Okay, this is in short the steps of total laryngectomy. Next is complications. Complications of total laryngectomy can be divided into immediate complications and delayed complications. Of the immediate complications, one is bleeding, then postoperative edema, airway compromise, chi leak, postoperative uh, hematoma. This will present as skin swelling and erythema. So that has to be evacuated. Uh, at the earliest, otherwise there is chance of infection and sepsis. Wound infection, pneumonia, embolism can happen and also pharyngocutaneous fistula. That also identified, uh, it should be identified at the earliest. Then regarding airway compromise, this patient should be kept under constant monitoring and all the facilities for suctioning of the stroma should be available. Then delayed complications. Pharyngoesophageal stenosis, stromal stenosis and hypothyroidism. So this is total laryngectomy in um, short with indication, contraindication. We discuss the steps and also the complications.